God will not fail. I know he will not fail. My God is able. He is that God that will never let me down. And I am so happy to have the privilege just to share some words with you if you just give me a few minutes. I love what Pastor Tim was talking to us about because I believe that if we come together in the household of faith and come in the unified body of Christ and pray and pray in the spirit, something can happen. I just believe that. I, I just believe that we're in a position now that we have to learn how to pray in the spirit. We have to learn how to pray to make something happen. We have to learn how to pray to shake up this place, shake the walls of this building, shake the foundation of this building, pray for your family, pray for your children, pray for the world, pray for the government, pray for situations, pray. We can't get enough of prayer. And that's what the book of Acts talks about in chapter 4 around verse 31. You'll read there in the scripture where it says, and when they T-H-E-Y, not one, not two, not three, but the household of faith. The Bible says, and when they prayed, when they all came together and assembled themselves as one, when they prayed, something happened. The foundation began to shake because God heard their prayer. I know sometimes you feel that God's not hearing your prayer, but God hears your prayer. And you probably feel that God is not answering your prayer because nothing happened. Well, I got news for you. When you pray, did you pray in the spirit? Or did you just mumble off some words? Because God's going to hear you, but God also is going to hear your heart. Because your heart's going to speak. And it speaks back to God. The Bible says, when they prayed, woo, something began to happen. And that's what I'm trying to tell you, Eastern Gate, that we as a family, we that are unified in the body of Christ, we have to pray. And we have to pray together as a family. If we talk about we're family, then let's pray as a family. When they prayed, the Bible says there in verse 31, it says that when they prayed, this place was shaken where they were all together. And guess what happened? The power was so strong that the Holy Ghost came in and knocked them all off their feet. You want to know why you can't feel it? Because you're not putting anything into it. You only get out of it for what you put into. Well, Bishop, I ain't never felt the Holy Ghost. Try praying in the spirit. That Holy Ghost will hit you so hard you don't know what you're talking about. You'll start speaking another language. You have no idea what you're talking about. You'll start jumping around sometimes like I do. And you might look at me crazy, but don't count it to Mel Griffin. Count it on the Holy Ghost. Because he can do that. He can change your figure of expression. Because he's like that. He can change the language because he's like that. And the Bible says when they all prayed together in the unifier of the body of Christ, something happened. They began to all pray. They began to all receive the Holy Ghost. In other words, the Bible is saying they all receive power. You know, you know what happens when we all receive the same power? Y'all got to excuse me. I know you never heard me preach like this, but this is me. Do, 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 do you know what happens when everybody in this place receives the same power? You're talking about moving mountains out of your life. You're talking about climbing over some hills that you can't climb on your own. You're talking about turning situations, bad situations, to a good thing to God. You're talking about healing. Talk about what you want. But when you pray in power, you have strength. 
you have unity. You want to be strong in the Lord, I dare somebody to pray in power and watch what that Holy Spirit will do. The Bible says that they all came together and unified. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And let me tell you else what that Holy Ghost will do. It will have you speak the word of God with boldness. See, that's our problem. We don't speak the word of God with boldness. We don't mind cussing out folks. We don't mind telling folks how they feel. We'll walk in the sanctuary and our spirit is all messed up so we can be mean to folks. We can say what's on our mind. But when you got the Holy Ghost, something happened. It just makes you have peace. It makes you stay in your place. It makes you become that person in Christ. They spoke the word of God. With boldness, wasn't ashamed to speak and pronounce the proclamation of the word of God. Some of us won't say amen. And now amen just means you agree. Amen. You ought to open your mouth and say amen sometime. Speak that word of God with boldness. Move demons out of your life. You got to move them by speaking the word of God with boldness. It's okay. Your situation will turn around much easier when you speak that word of God boldness. Some of us are so sick and depend on those medicines and yeah, and the pills and, and the doctors but the Bible says you got to get that Holy Ghost in you and speak that word of God with boldness tell that demon to get behind you tell that demon go back to hell from which you come from I speak in the name of Jesus and I declare that I stand on the promises of God's word that's Bible I'm not making it up it's what they said that they begin to speak the word of God in boldness. And then the Bible says here, as Pastor Tim was talking about, and the multitude of them. In other words, the majority of them in the house of, of, of faith here. Let me tell you why the Bible says the multitude of them. Because the Bible knows that everyone's not going to agree. But when the Bible says multitude, it means the majority. And the majority wins. You're going to have those that just won't agree. You, you, you got longevity of remembrance with Trinity Family Life Center. I understand that. You, you, you got some soft spots of Trinity Family. I like that. That's, uh, that's okay. But I am also telling you, when God put the shepherd before the sheep, it is the sheep's job to follow the shepherd wherever the shepherd leads the sheep. You may not like where you're going, but trust the man of God as he trusts God and just be obedient to what he wants you to do. Yeah, the multitude of them, they agreed. They did. And you had some that just said, no, I don't want to go. I don't want to have the name change. Have you ever thought that you might just be selfish? I have nothing to lose because I stand on the word of God. And if this is the word of God, I'm going to speak it. Have you ever thought about it? It might be a selfish spirit because you don't want to move. God said, have you heard of seasons? Winter don't always stay winter. Fall don't always stay fall. Summer don't always stay summer. Seasons are in your life and seasons come, seasons go. But when you trust God, it's not about questioning where I'm going. It's about, Lord, whatever you do, I just want to follow. You just put it right before me and I'll follow. Just give me every footstep to step into. I'll follow because you're God. It's not about the name of the church. It's about the mission. It's about the vision. It's about where God's trying to take us. They began to speak the word of God with boldness. The multitude of them were all on one accord. And the Bible says in that same verse, they were all on one accord with one heart. They didn't have five or six different hearts, one heart. Every heart felt the heart of Jesus. So you can feel your own heart and think you're right. But see, you're right don't mean that you're right. That's just the way you feel. 
If you want to be right, you have to feel the rightness with Jesus, the right heart with Jesus. It comes with Jesus. You shouldn't be able to make a move unless he gives you direction. Some of us have jumped over so many loopholes and trying to get to where we want to go and you haven't gotten there yet and you're trying to go and doors are slammed in your face and it's all because God said don't go yet. The Bible's trying to help us understand how to get instructions for the Lord. And then it says here, it says in verse uh, 32, it says, as they believe on one heart and one soul, not one of them said that uh, they possess what is theirs. You know why? Because they were on one heart, the heart of Jesus. It's good that you donated some furniture and donated this to uh, Trinity Family Life. Say, that's good. You should have. But it don't mean anything if you didn't do it from your heart. You didn't donate to the church from your heart. Your heart's not right. Because anything that you donate from your heart, you should feel like you got a blessing to help build the kingdom of God right here on earth. You got chairs in your garage. You should bring them to the church so folks can sit down. Amen. It's a blessing when you donate to the church. But you don't donate to the church and get mad and want to snatch it back. You blew your blessing. Many of us do that. We get mad and we don't like what the pastor says and we don't like where he's going. So I'm going to take my drum set. We'll take your drum set. We'll beat on some cans until God sends some more. Amen. In the early days, the Bible said that they didn't do that. They didn't begin to brag about what they brought to the church because they were on one heart and one soul. And they said that in verse 33, with great power, he gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Even the apostles were able to be on one accord and all witness the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Why? Because they were with one heart and on one accord, not a disciple had to go out there and say, well, I didn't know if Jesus really got up or not because I didn't see him. They were all witnesses to the fact that he got up. Oh, I'm so glad he got up too. Aren't you glad he got up? woo -wee. The reason why I'm here today to proclaim the gospel is because he got up. They witnessed that. The apostles came together, and as I close, the Bible even says there that in verse 34, neither was any of them. They lacked nothing. They didn't have to worry about it. They didn't go around lacking anything. That's the purpose of the church, because if the church can't help out a needy family, then what is our purpose? They didn't lack anything. Whatever was there for the need, it was there, not for the want. See, that's our problem. We want, we want. But God says, what about your need? It was there for the need, and the apostle and the preacher was able to distribute the need for the wealth of that person. Not one person lacked anything. They didn't have to worry about that. But what they did do, and this is the one thing I like about here at the Eastern Gate, and I picked this up when I first came over here. I said, this church is not only a loving church, but it is a church that help out the needs of God's people. I witnessed that with my own eyes. How this ministry, see, that's something we don't even have to worry about because we're already there. Helping the needs of those persons that are in need of. This is a great spirit that this church has. But there are some things that we got to work on. We got to work on our love for each other because everybody here don't really love like you say you love because love is that action word and it shows in your walk. It shows in your talk. And I'm telling you, if you're going to go where God wants to lead us, we got some homework to do. 
But God is moving. And he's moving in a mighty way. And as I close, I want to share with our ministry, I am so happy to be a part of this family. And so is resurrection. We don't feel absent or divided or separated because you all have made us feel family. But what you have done, did for resurrection, we need to take it outside of the doors and do it for them that are coming inside of our new walk and make them feel loved, make them feel wanted, make them feel needed so God can get the glory and the honor and the praise. Hallelujah. 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 Ain't God good? That, that was awesome. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. That, that was a good word. A good word, my friend. Thank you, Lord. If we'd have given him the full sermon time, just think where that would have gone. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Oh, the Lord is good. All that he's doing in our midst. Thank the Lord for the word that's given to us this morning. Will you stand with me for our benediction? And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. And be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you. And give you peace. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.